AI is evolving faster than ever. You have new models coming out practically every month and new modalities popping up like text to video, text to music, and soon enough, it's gonna be text to anything you can imagine. But here's the truth. While tools and models will come and go, there's one evergreen skill that will always set you apart no matter what. It's not a template, it's not a formula, and it's definitely not a specific prompting style. It's solely a mindset. Master this one mindset and no matter what comes next, whether it's text to gaming or text to VR or text to anything you haven't even dreamed of yet, you'll always be able to harness the power of this new modality and prompt it without having to relearn brand new prompting skills or techniques. This is the skill that I wanna show you today. If you haven't met before, my name is Mark Kashif and I run my own AI automation agency called Prompt Advisors for the past two years. We work with clients in every industry to better understand where to position AI solutions best in their workflows. I have over 10 years of experience in data science and machine learning, and I used natural language processing before it was cool. So without further ado, I'm gonna walk through the concept on a whiteboard to break it down step by step, and then we'll dive into some tactical examples using ChatGPT and a few other tools to really drive the point home. You ready to learn? Let's dive right in. So the mindset I'm referring to is pretty much treating every single modality like a different language. Even though you can use the exact same alphabet and exact same language across all these modalities, whether it be text to text or text to speech or text to image, there are nuances in every single modality that make it necessary for you to understand the language or the words associated with that modality specifically that really allows you to harness it to its fullest potential. So let's take a mundane example to drive the point home. Let's say we wanted to create a text to video prompt or we wanted to say something like, I want a video of a nice dog running happily. Now it is proper English, kind of. It's a sensible prompt and it will yield the result of most likely a dog running that's happy. But the words are so far removed from what they can be to really bring out the most of that text to video experience. So instead of saying a nice happy dog, it should be something like create a cinematic scene with a drone aerial shot of a dog frolicking in XYZ location or scene. And you can start to add more and more vocabulary in the language of text to video that will make it a lot richer. So to make this more tactical, let's take a look at this whiteboard. So you can see here we have four different sections. We have text to text, we have text to image, we have text to video, and then we have text to music. And this is one that I dabbled a lot over the holiday break as I was unbelievably ill. And the only thing I could do is try to make beats by writing prompts. So I learned that I had no idea on how to write prompts when it comes to musical melodies because it wasn't the skill set that I was actually proficient at. But let's start at the very beginning. So text to text, this is something you're very familiar with, especially if you watched this channel before, where you have keywords that are command words that are like summarize, generate, expand on, rewrite this, uh, look deeper into X. So these are more commands that you're used to giving ChatGPT, especially when you're going back and forth in a conversation. When we go to text to image now, this is when we start to expand our vocabulary and really specialize in the language of text to image. Where now, when you say the words sketch, it really makes a huge difference in your output. You will get something that looks like a sketch. When you say vivid coloring, that adds a different dimension to maybe the saturation of the image you receive. When it comes to photorealistic, this means that you're telling the AI, I want this to look as similar as possible to me taking an actual video camera or a camera in general and snapping a picture. And then when it comes to cartoon style, that's pretty self-explanatory, but it's the impact of these certain words in this language that helps you bring the most out of the text to image modality. Pulling that same thread, if we go to text to video, you have words like cinematic, aerial shot, especially if you wanna say a drone aerial shot, it'll give you a very specific effect in a video. If you watched my prior video on how to do text to video prompts with Sora, you'll know that you can get some really impressive results by talking about camera angles in certain ways. And then you have words like B-roll and time-lapse. And there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of different words or ways of referring to things that will make your text to video outputs exponentially better. So when it comes to prompting a certain modality, getting into that frame of mind and getting into that language is very important to be able to yield the best results possible. In the last category here, text to music. This is one that I'm excited to show you a demo of how this works in practice. But you have words like synth that I learned that is a proxy for synthetic electronic beats. You have 
melodic and you have harmony and you have high tempo and low tempo. Initially, when I was prompting text to music on Suno AI, I was writing things like make me a nice sounding song or a nice beat or create an addictive beat. But I couldn't actually understand how to describe addictive in a way that's not the word addictive. I didn't know what comprises, what leads to something that's perceived as an addictive beat. How do you create a buildup for a song where it progresses very swiftly and then you get to some really major beat and then you have a drop or some form of ethereal moment. The better the outcome you want, the more you have to immerse yourself in that underlying language. Now let's drive this home with some tactile examples. So in all of these different demos, I'm going to use meta prompting, which I've gone over at length on this channel to get AI to write prompts for us. So we don't have to know the words or the language ourselves, but we can create prompts that are enriched with that language itself. So this will serve as our cheat code to avoid having to memorize all these different words that I just mentioned to you and just relying and leaning on AI to do that heavy lifting for us. And if you're not familiar with what meta prompting is, it's pretty much assigning the rule to ChatGPT or any large language model to say, you are a prompt engineer and you write very detailed and succinct prompts that do X, Y, Z. You assign it the role of a prompt engineer, and in this case, we're going to add one level deeper and ask it, you are also a specialist in writing prompts for music or video or image, so that it then enriches that prompt with all the necessary words possible to make it as good as possible. So if we go in here and we say, you are a prompt engineer, create a prompt that will generate an SEO optimized web page and blog for my dental clinic called Smiley Dental. All right, so let's say that is our prompt. Text to text, pretty straightforward. You can see the very first word is a word of the language of text to text, which is generate an SEO optimized web page and blog for a dental clinic called Smiley Dental, located in Toronto, Canada. The tone should be professional, friendly, and approachable. And the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. It basically creates an entire prompt telling it how to structure that web page content and that blog content. And you'll notice one nuance now that you'll not be able to unsee that it's not only specializing in the language of text to text, because I said SEO, it's trying to also specialize in everything associated in the language of the SEO world. So it says here, use SEO friendly subheadings and it lists out some keywords It then talks about CTA, which is call to action. And then it mentions a few other things here related to the two concepts we're mentioning. So this is straightforward, nothing really new here. So now let's try text to image. And just to make my life a bit easier, I'm going to enable dictation through this app called voice control for ChatGPT. It's free on the Google Chrome store. So I can just click next and done. So now I'm going to create another meta prompt but this time it'll be a specialist in image prompting. You are a prompt engineer that is specialized in creating image based prompts where I can describe to you in layman's terms, what I'm imagining for an image and you'll create a one to two sentence prompt that is enriched with all the necessary words to bring about that picture in the best way possible. So if you create something like this, I'm just gonna send this, or maybe, you know what, just to make it foolproof, I'll say, ask me what type of image, let's just correct that, I want to create. Okay, so now I should just say, what are you trying to do? And then I'll respond back and I'll say, I want to create a fox running away from a green monster. All right, so trying to emulate Shrek here. If you then send that, you should get some form of prompt. And if you read it right now, you're going to start to see this mindset of this new language that we're shifting to. So this is a vibrant scene of a swift red fox with a fluffy tail, a little adjective there, because it'll be useful for the prompt sprinting through a dense forest, its expression showing fear and urgency as a towering green monster with glowing yellow eyes and sharp claws chases behind yada, yada, yada. And if you take this now and we then go to our toolbox and then we click on picture and we paste this prompt, we should be able to get a pretty decent image with the level of description that we have. And you'll see here with just one try, it's pretty spot on. And I didn't have to really break a sweat to realize 
all the different words and adjectives I need to bring out the best from Dolly. So let's move on to text to video. Same concept, let's enable dictation. And this time we'll create a prompt that's specialized in creating little text to video clips. So if we click on this, you are a prompt engineer with a specialty in creating text to video prompts where I give you a very basic prompt in layman's terms and you take that and you create a one to two sentence prompt that is enriched with all the vocabulary needed from a cinematic standpoint to create a nice clip or video of what I'm mentioning. In this case, I can just send this as is. It should ask me what I'm trying to actually create. So let's take that exact same example. So a fox running away from a green monster in the forest, right? So this time it will have a different version of that prompt that is more geared towards text to video, that language. One key thing here as you read this is you have the same adjectives as before, but you'll notice one key difference where it says as that monster runs through the forest, it causes birds to scatter and leaves to swirl in its wake. So it's adding this after effect. So if we take this prompt and we jump into something like Sora, and let's try to keep it at 480p just so it renders more quickly. We'll just create this video and it should be decent at actually capturing that entire experience. And you'll see here this little green monster with the leaves swirling, jumping and running around the fox. Although the physics are not physicsing very well right now because it's 480p, but the general idea is, again, I didn't break a sweat. It was able to create that small effect of those leaves swirling just through its imagination of getting itself in the mindset of text to video. Now let's get to the final use case, which is my favorite right now, which is text to music. So if we go on this website, it's called Suno. I have no affiliation. I've just used them. They're probably one of the best at the text to music space. You'll hear all kinds of songs that sound so realistic, like this one, for example. Mama always said I could sing the blues. Hallelujah, better pray I don't lose. Coming in draped, head to toe, green or blue. Might look cool, but I really put a boot in you. So you can see here that sounds very realistic. And you can see the little metadata here that says high pitched vocals, hip hop, R&B, electronic synths. Remember that word? Um, 80s retro and fast paced. Now, this is not the actual prompt. This is a description of the actual song itself. If we wanted to create our own song, what we could do here is write a song description. So instead of myself doing that, and you can see an example that they wrote, a psychedelic Delta blues song. These are words that are not in my vocabulary. I can go to ChatGPT and say, you are a prompt engineer that is a specialist at creating text to music prompts when I give you a layman's term description of the song I'm trying to create, create a maximum of a one sentence prompt that is fully enriched with all the necessary vocabulary to encapture and embody what I'm trying to convey in that song description. So again, it should ask me what I'm trying to go for. And I could say, I want to make a pop song about AI models, the actual LLMs, not real models. Okay, so if we now create an upbeat modern pop song with energetic melodies and catchy lyrics that celebrate the innovation, yada, yada, yada. And you can see here it says blending playful metaphors with tech inspired themes. And if we paste this into Suno, there's a new model that's called V4, which is the one that's the really hyper realistic one. And if we create this and just wait a tad, I'll let you listen to a little snippet of the result. It took around a minute to render, but here it is. All right, so way more colloquial than I was expecting, but there is a second version. Let's see if that one's any better.
Right, so the lyrics are not very inspired, but you get the idea that you can start to create certain beats and it does match pretty much what it prompted, which is upbeat, modern pop song with energetic melodies. And that was hyper energetic in my opinion. So the whole concept here is you can prompt anything if you can just switch your mindset to use the language you need to be able to derive the most value out of that modality. With all of these examples, hopefully you can see that no matter what your skill set is or whatever your limitation in language is when it comes to different modalities, as we get new ones and we get more mature text to web application, text to mobile application, it's all about understanding the words that can be used to describe the outcomes that are possible with that modality. So hopefully this mindset helps you overcome any mental barriers over maybe experimenting in areas that aren't in your realm of competency and step up your prompt engineering game forever. I'm gonna make the meta prompts I showed you in this video available in the Gumroad link in the description below. And if this was helpful for you, let me know in the comments and then leave a like and sub the channel. I'll see y'all next time.